A closer look at unintentional bias in America. In recent years, almost every organization, big and small, seems to have pledged anti-discrimination training to raise awareness and change personal behaviors. But does that work? And is it even possible for people to change? It's a big topic science journalist Jessica Nordell tackles in her new book, The End of Bias, a beginning detailing a transformative, groundbreaking exploration into how we can eradicate unintentional prejudice behavior. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks so much for having me. I want to start off with you just defining what implicit and unconscious bias is and, and how that differs from stereotyping based on your research. So when we grow up in a culture, we learn categories that people belong to and we absorb passively and actively stereotypes and associations about those categories. What unconscious bias describes is this phenomenon, which is that when we encounter a person who we recognize as belonging to one of those categories, those stereotypes and associations begin to influence the way that we interact with people. So they affect our thoughts, our, our voice, our emotions, our actions. And the two really important things about an unconscious or unintentional bias are that for one, it can happen really fast. So we can behave in these ways that are influenced by stereotypes uh, without even necessarily knowing that we're doing it. And really importantly, these are reactions that really conflict with values. So someone can believe themselves to be egalitarian or really feel strongly that fairness is an important value and still be susceptible to behaving in these ways that conflict with those values. In your book, you also talk about problems with diversity training in America. What works and, and what doesn't? So there are a couple of problems with, I mean, there are many problems with diversity training. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll highlight two. One is that these trainings are rarely evaluated. So they could be having a positive effect. They could be having a negative effect. They could be having no effect. We just often don't have a lot of data about what kind of impact they're having on people's actual behaviors and on the kinds of structures that people are willing to support in their organizations. Um, another big problem is that they can create the appearance of change without actual change. So what really needs to happen is leaders and organizations need to ask not if, but how patterns of bias show up in their organizations, and then take really systematic, systematic steps to eliminate those patterns of bias. There are a lot of different approaches that can work, um, including transparency for promotion and hiring, um, creating really objective criteria so that when people are evaluated, they're evaluated according to the same criteria instead of kind of amorphous or ambiguous criteria. But the important thing is that this starts from the top and that leaders really have a commitment to making serious changes in their organization and not having like a one-time diversity training as a, as a means to the end. And another interesting point that you touch on is anti-bias interventions and how difficult it can be for people to recognize their own predispositions. Are we still much better at documenting bias than solving it? We're pretty good at documenting it, and it is it is challenging to solve it. I mean, one one real problem is that um, we all think we're more objective than we are. We all think that we're maybe just a little bit less biased than everybody else, and it can be painful to do the kind of introspective awareness that we need to do in order to examine how these patterns show up in our own in our own minds and on our own behaviors. But these are really old. They're hundreds, in, in some cases, thousands of years old, these negative patterns, stereotypes, and frankly, toxic lies. So we're not immune from them. And it's really important that we do that kind of introspection because the structures that we create in society come from individuals. I mean, they're not supernaturally you know, descended from the heavens. They, are, they come from individuals, minds, hearts, motivations. And so that kind of um, internal introspection is really essential. And what role and, do you think that the, the hyperpolarization of the 2020 presidential election cycle, uh, what did that play as far as making it more difficult for Americans to recognize their own biases? You know, the polarization really does make it difficult because there's this phenomenon in psychology called outgroup homogeneity. And it's sort of a technical term, but basically what it means is that we tend to see our own group as variable and various. And we tend to see the group that we don't belong to 
as homogenous and monolithic. And when we think of the other as a homogenous monolith, it makes it easier to dehumanize the other group and makes it harder to see them as fully human, which is really where we need to start. I mean, we need to see another group as as complex as ourselves. That's really the beginning of true humanization, which we need in order to actually be able to talk in a meaningful way and communicate across differences. And, and lastly, in your opinion, are there ways that we could change our political process that might make it easier for people to find common ground with each other? Well, I, I can't speak to the political process necessarily, but I do think that having meaningful connections with people who belong to different groups. That has been shown. There's a lot of research that shows that having meaningful relationships with people of, who have social differences can dramatically decrease stereotyping. So I don't know exactly from a, from a political perspective, but from a, a community level perspective, a neighborhood, individual level perspective, creating connections across difference is a really important place to start. Jessica Nordell, we thank you again for your time tonight. The End of Bias, a beginning, is available now wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.